this is a short demonstration of transactions that is lock management when using redirect DML with active data guard my previous two videos have covered active data guard and DML redirection you can see those two videos I will not cover the, the specifics in detail but I'll just show you how the lock management appears when using active data guard and redirection of DML so I'll first connecting to my primary for the purpose of this demo I'll create another user verify that this user works So I'm connected to the primary as Scott Tiger. I'll just connect back as my original user. Now my standby is actually ru running redo apply without having opened the database. So I'll just reopen the database so that I can use active data guard. So as of up to this point the database is open read only without redo apply. So transactions are not being replicated from primary to standby. Once I start redo apply of course it becomes active data guard requiring the active data guard license. Let's connect back to the primary and create a dummy table. So I've created a table, I'll insert some data into it. Commit and then grant select on it. so now at the standby I will connect as Scott just verify that I am at the standby so you can see here I am at the standby it's running read only with apply on a physical standby so this is active data guard so far I have not enabled uh, DML redirection but I can now query the dummy table and because I have not enabled DML redirection I will not be able to insert into it
okay so that does not allow me to insert because it's open read only without dml redirection i will just enable read dml redirection now it's a simple alter session command so this actually opens the database link back to the primary executes the insert at the primary waits for the redo apply from the primary to propagate back to the standby so in any dml from the standby will take slightly more time than dml from the primary so i can verify at the primary that the data has come through okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to do some transactions or do some updates and see whether the rows get locked I'll just update my row here. Okay, so I'm just going to update the data column. Remember, there's a second column called data column. Well, the first column is the ID column. So I'll just update for that one row only. And I don't commit. So this update has gone through, has been issued, it has propagated to the primary, but has not committed. So if I query from the primary, I don't see the update yet. Okay. But if I were to try to update it, This is what happens when you do real-time recording of a demo. So now this update seems to hang. Why? Because the update issued from the standby is actually a transaction that occurs at the primary and that row is locked. Let me see if we can even verify that. Let me just duplicate the session. So this is a standard uh, bare bones script that's provided by Oracle called UTL lock T that shows you lock weights. Actually, you can even enhance the script. You can write your own modification to the script, but this is good enough for our purpose. So what it's saying is that session 48 is waiting on session 57 in an exclusive lock mode. Let me just uh, this is ID the name machine. Okay, so you can see here Scott from the standby is fifty seven, and that's the one that is holding the lock. Hemant, that is SID 48 at the primary is waiting for the lock. So this is a very clear way to say that this the the session the client is actually the standby server which has a lock on the record at the primary. So if I were to let's say commit here, okay, and then let before let me just. Before I do this, let me just run the UTL lock T script again. So now there is no locker waiter. There is a transaction. The primary has this update which is active, not committed, because this guy's update went through and was committed. And now the standby is unable to update the record. Okay. If I were to query the primary, 
I would see that the, the update that the standby has had done has already been overwritten because after the standby did its commit, the primary update update at primary has gone through. So at the primary side, this is the new value for that row. This value from the standby has already been overwritten, but the new value value at the primary is not visible to the standby because it is not committed. Remember, primary and standby are just two different sessions in the same database. So this is a standard locking mechanism. Two sessions, if they are trying to update the same row, the first session who has got the update will hold a lock and the second session will not be able to update the same row. So if I were to run this query again, Before I run the query, unfortunately, we get this timeout. Now, this is something that happens when you have distributed databases. ADG DML redirection is actually internally because it's in a database link is a method of using distributed databases. So you have something called distributed lock timeouts, which is not there if both the sessions are from the same instance. If both the sessions are from the same instance, this lock timeout doesn't happen the lock wait is forever until the lock holder commits but you have one session from another instance from another, from the standby waiting on the primary then it can time out because the transaction is actually at the primary so the standby will time out the standby session will time out because there is a parameter called distributed lock timeout so if you are using DML redirection and you are not committing immediately for transactions which are for records that are being updated on both sides, remember you will run into this issue, distributed lock timeout. I don't know if you can show that parameter here. Okay, this is just 60 seconds. Distributed lock timeout is just 60 seconds by default. You would probably want to change it when you're using DML redirection. Let before I run the script, let me just roll back, run this update again. Be prepared to run this update. Okay, so I've done the update at the primary, the update at the standby hangs. And if I run you can see now 48 is a lock holder forty eight is the primary is a lock holder and fifty seven the standby is the waiter. So this is the reverse of the previous scenario. In the first scenario, I said the lock was held by the standby. In this area scenario, the lock is held by the primary. So UTL lock T now shows that the session from the standby is waiting on the primary. So until the primary does a timeout, the standard behavior is you will have a lock wait. <coughs> Let me just Okay, so before I do any commit or rollback at the, at the primary, again we get a distributed lock timeout. So again, let me repeat this warning. You will have distributed lock timeout issues if you're using DML redirection from the standby to the primary. So let me just commit this. And now I should see. This is the new value I've updated the primary and so now even the standby sees the updated value from the primary and my standby's update that was happening here has got over it has has got discarded because of the distributed lock timeout. There's one more scenario. Let me do a delete statement. Again, I can't do an 
update here because I have the same problem I have a distributed lock timeout I mean I have a I have a lock in the primary instance which is held by the session from the primary session 48 is at the primary session 57 is the waiter from the standby let me just roll back this and now this update has gone through but not committed Sorry, let me go back to this screen here. Okay. So this is the peculiarity. You will not see uh, a wait because session one, the primary session, is not attempting to update the same, same record now, right now, because I've already issued a rollback. But if I were to try to delete now while the lock is held by the session from the standby remember this session is holding the lock so again now 57 57 is the standby which is holding the lock 48 is the primary which is waiting on the lock so standby can lock out primary primary can lock out standby but the difference between the normal behavior where you have both sessions in the same instance is that in this case this you have a distributed lock timeout that can happen because the standby is issuing a transaction via an internal database link so you have to be familiar with this feature long time ago I used to work with distributed locks in version 7 and version 8 so yeah we used to have problems when we were doing transactions across databases using database links so if you want to use redirect DML be aware of this distributed lock timeouts let me just uh, commit this now this delete has gone through and now nobody is waiting but if I were to update this so again I have in stuff 57 blocking 48 I now have 48 blocking 47. 48 is the session from the primary which is blocking the update session from the standby. Let me just roll back this. Commit this. So there you have it. You can have locking when you use DML redirection. Normally behaving the same way as if both the sessions were in the same instance. But the difference is with DML redirection, you also have something called distributed locks because DML redirection depends on a database link. Internally, it's called ADG redirect DML from the standby to the primary. Even if you have multiple standbys, if you look at one of my blog posts where I demonstrate multiple standbys using a DML redirection, even if you have multiple standbys, all the standbys will have an internal link pointing only to the primary and all the locks will be at the primary because the transaction is active at the primary there is really no transaction to the standby until a commit or rollback is issued from either place so if you want to see you can see my previous videos and I've even included links to my blog posts covering uh, active data guard and DML reduction with data guard a blog post also covers multiple standbys I cannot show multiple standbys in my video demo but my blog post does cover multiple standbys with DML redirection. Thank you.